Hello, Ayana. Let's go ahead and take a look. Um, change the font to Gil, Gil Sands. That's good. That works. I'll talk about that in a second. That was a good choice. Took away the scribble behind the panda and added bamboo sticks. Excellent. I would definitely like feedback on the bamboo because it's not all the way satisfied with them. Is there too much? Should I change the size? Should they be placed differently? Or should I just get rid of them altogether? I'll talk about all of that. Didn't get a chance yet, but I'm going to detail the butterflies. Okay, excellent. Um, all right, let's go ahead and take a look. I, I'm just blown away at how far this piece has come. I mean, you're working hard and it shows. This is gorgeous. It really is. Um, okay, a couple of recommendations. So you want to, I, I, I love the, the, uh, the bamboo. One thing I would definitely remove is this this kind of frame right here. I don't think we need it. I think it just kind of draws a degree of separation that is not needed. I, I would I would remove that that um, kind of frame right there. Um, the bamboo looks awesome, and I think it's a great idea. One of the things I would recommend with the bamboo is right now you've got like this kind of large bamboo and medium bamboos to the side, right? And then you have the little tiny skinny bamboos right here. What am I, I'm getting at, I kind of want to fill in the bottom of this with bamboo. Um, and, and the reason I say that is because I, I think that it would be an interesting technique to have the, the panda kind of coming or looking like he's nestled among the bamboo. We're not quite there yet right now. It just it seems like he's just kind of pasted right there. But I think if we take some of these bamboos and move them down into here, and you could even... Uh, make sure that you use like some big bamboos and some small bamboos. And the nice thing is that you can bring those right behind um, the the panda. So I, I, it's okay the way these are abruptly ending. That's perfectly fine. You can do that with some of them. You can bring some of them up right behind the panda so that they don't end. But I would leave this area open for the title, definitely. So I'd say just add a little bit more bamboo right around in, in through here. Okay. And then... Um, At that point, I think that we could increase the size of the focal point. Right now, the pan, pan, panda is the focal point. I think we could increase the size of the panda a little bit. A couple of areas of the panda, like see, see that? We got these really cool organic lines all through the panda. But then right there, we got just a straight geometric line there, there, there. Not so much there. That's a little bit more organic. So is that. But that boom and right there is just really jarring. Try to uh, um, duplicate or mimic this kind of effect right here, where it's much more organic and less of a straight uh, geometric uh, shape. Um, now, what's going to happen is, is the, by default, this is going to be the focal point, the eyes. And anytime you have an animal or a person in a composition, whether it be photographic or illustrative, the eyes are going to become the focal point. For that reason, I, I would develop these eyes, really try to get some highlights in there and really give some life to those eyes. Um, I think that's really going to make a big difference. Now, watch my cursor. I'm thinking about something like this for the size of the panda's head. So we would definitely want it bigger. Then the butterflies look great, and I would definitely, I, I, I think that I would definitely um, uh, put a little more detail in those in those butterflies. Um, other than that, I think we're just doing a wonderful job. And again, I, I'd like to commend you because this piece has really come a long, long way. So really fantastic work so far. Uh, one area that doesn't, and watch your colors with, with the butterflies. That blue is really jarring. I think the pinks are a little jarring. Try to, 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 th these, that almost looks like a default RGB, uh, blue and pink. So, so try to get more custom colors. Um, if you go into Illustrator, I'm going to show you something. Hang on one second. So I'm waiting for my Illustrator to open because I want to show you something, um, uh, some color, um, palettes that are, are located in Illustrator that actually work out beautifully. Okay, typography. The type, I think the type looks good. And I'm, I think it's good. I, the, all caps I'm perfectly fine with. Um, after all, it, after all, it is the giant panda. So I think after we increase the size of the panda's face itself, I think we can also increase the size of the giant panda itself. I would try to stay away from black though. Maybe try to gather a color um, from within the composition to use for your, your type. I think the black just advances a little too much in, in the composition. Also, you've got your stroke, you've got your type stroked, which means it's got that outline on it. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. See that? It's got a little red outline on it. Now, you don't want to out, and most designers 
and, and most professional designers, including myself, I am I, I'm against stroking type always, 100% of the time. It, it To me, it never works. And the reason being, and again, stroke is just an outline on the type. It changes the shapes of the letters, whether the stroke fall on the inside of the contour line, on the outside of the contour line, or half and half. Either way, you're going to, the stroke is going to affect the shapes of the letters themselves, as well as the shapes of the negative space around the letters. So I would say stay away from um, stroking letter forms. Uh, Illustrator, for some reason, I'm not sure what's going on. I'm going to just pause this again. Something weird is going on with my Illustrator. Let me see if I can't get this open. I'll be right back. Oh, okay. So, yes, I am recording again. Sorry about that. So, I, I got Illustrator open, and I just want to show you this. I'm just going to open a new file in Illustrator. And as soon as this opens, I'm so sorry about this. My Illustrator is just really running horribly. As you can see, I think I'm about to crash. Um, I might I might put this on hold again. I'm so sorry about this, but I'm gonna put this on hold again. Jeez, finally. All right, this is what I'm getting at here. They're gonna come over to my swatches panel in the Illustrator and see this little hamburger menu right here. I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna come down here to open swatch library and we see all of these really awesome predefined color palettes. So if we go to nature, for instance, let's go to foliage. And you can see we got all of these really cool color palettes. Um, and that's not the only library color. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff. There's, there's landscapes, gorgeous, all sorts of different. And again, I'm just going to close that. To get there, just go to your swatches, click that hamburger menu, come down to open swatch library, and all of these are, are color palettes. Um, and if the ones with the arrow have a, a bunch of nested color palettes within, so be sure to check those out. I think those might help in your color choices. Okay, so again, sorry that took so long, but um, fantastic job. I'm really excited about this piece. So really, really beautiful work so far. Um, any questions, comments, concerns at all, please let me know. Okay, thank you very much.